Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Fowley, and welcome to podcast 3.3, The Periodic Table. And we're going to talk about definition of periodicity. We're going to talk about periodic table history with Mendeleev and Mosley. We're going to talk about atomic size and why it is what it is, what metals and nonmetals are, and their properties. Yeah, all that other stuff. You can read. Who am I kidding? So, it's the 16th of the month, so guess what? Oprah Magazine is coming. It's the 16th of February. Look, there's Oprah. There's the 16th of March. Look, there's Skinny Oprah. It's the 16th of April. Look, there's Chubby Oprah. It's the 16th of May. Look, it's Skinny Oprah. You can never tell what's going on, but every 16th of the month, it's Oprah. And that section goes into the periodical section of the library, which is where you learn that periodic means repeating. So you're going to see repeating trends on the periodic table. Periodic law says when atoms are arranged by atomic number, it's got to be atomic number. Trends will repeat. So size. The periodic trend for size is this column is big. And then they get smaller, 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 tiny. And then big. Smaller, 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 tiny. And then big. Smaller, 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 tiny. And then big. Smaller, smaller. Yeah, you get the idea. And then charge is also a periodic trend, meaning it repeats. The charge of this column is always plus 1, plus 2, plus 3 plus, uh, this is zero, sorry, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero. So if I said, what's the charge of calcium? When it makes an ion, you would say plus two. If I said, what's the charge of sulfur? You would say minus two. If I said, what's the charge of bismuth? You would say minus three. And what's the charge of radon? You'd say zero. And Cosmo arrives. That's periodic, 16th of the month. Woohoo, Cosmo. Oh, I don't even read the articles. History. Dmitry Mendeleev. He saw trends when elements were arranged by atomic mass. Now, it's not atomic mass, it's atomic number, but he was close. He predicted elements and their properties before they were discovered. So imagine this. People didn't know there was such a thing as the element, I think it was germanium. And when he set up his periodic table, there was a hole in it. People said, dude, your periodic table stinks. There's a big hole there. And he said, nope, that means you need to go find germanium, little scientist man. And he was right. Mostly just the periodic table arranged by atomic number. He's a man. It's always better to fix the man than to be the man. Atomic size is periodic. We talked about as you go to the right, it gets smaller. As you go down, it gets bigger. That's not periodic, but you get the idea. As you go down, there are more energy levels, so the atom gets much, 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 much bigger. As you go across, there are more protons for the same energy level. So remember, protons are positive, so the pull makes the atoms crunching closer. So protons attract the electrons, and that's why it gets smaller. More protons means more attraction. So if you love your mama, you stay closer to your house. So if you really like your mom, if she wakes you up in the morning and says, it's wakey up time, it's wakey up time, then you'll stay a lot closer to home. But if you hate your mom and can't stand her, your first chance you get, you run off to college someplace far, far away, like, I don't know, Stanford or Australia or something. If you are the 25th kid in the class of 24, you are way far away in the hallway. And guess which kid I'm going to throw out in the 25th kid that's going to be sitting out in the hallway? Hmm, yeah, it's Haley. How do we measure the size of an atom? Well, you can't go from nucleus to outer electron because when electrons move in clouds and, go and they teleport and all these other crazy things. So we can't pinpoint their location. You measure the distance between the nuclei and divide by two. So if here's a nucleus and here's a nucleus, you got all kinds of cloudiness and all kinds of cloudiness, you can measure your nuclei and divide it by two. Regions of the periodic table. You should know this. So here's a stair step. Boop, 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 boop. This side is the metals. So everything on, this, on the left-hand side is the metals. Everything on the right-hand side is the nonmetals. And you should know that hydrogen is a nonmetal and aluminum is a metal. Now the metalloids, I'm going to shade in the metalloids, they have two sides on the stair step. And they have properties of both metals and nonmetals. Metallic properties. So properties of metals, they are lustrous. That means shiny. They are good conductors of heat and electricity. Uh, they are malleable. And they are ductile. Now, ductile means it can be drawn into wires. So you can turn it into a wire. And malleable means if you hit it with a hammer. So if I have a thing and I hit it with a hammer, there's my great hammer drawing again, because everyone should be able to draw a great hammer. Um, it will bend. It won't shatter like a like an old lady's hip. So the opposite of malleable is brittle. So nonmetals are brittle like old lady's hips. If you hit an old lady in the hip with a hammer, 
So her hip doesn't bend, it shatters into a million pieces. And, ah! By the way, don't hit old ladies with hammers. Um, so nonmetals are the opposite of metals. So instead of being lustrous, they are dull. Instead of being good conductors, they are bad conductors. Instead of being malleable, they are brittle. Instead of being ductile, they are the oh-so-clever non-ductile. I don't know if that's hyphenated or not, but you can probably get an extra credit point if you look that up. Regions of the periodic table. Lanthanide, actinide, transition. OK, so here's the lanthanide series. Here's the actinide series. Lanthanide, actinide. Um, transition metals. Transition metals. Inner transition metals are the lanthanide and actinide series. Regions of the periodic table. Man-made. So anything over 93 is man-made. And if you look at the periodic table and it's not uh, paper clipped closed, it looks invisible. So anything over 93, these guys are all man-made. Not by me, but good idea. Always radioactive over 82, which is 83 and up, which you knew that from last unit. Ohana means family. Lilo and Stitch say family means nobody is left behind or forgotten. Chemists say families are columns and have similar properties. So that means that when I look here, lithium should be similar to sodium, similar to potassium, similar to rubidium, and different from boron and aluminum. So in the same column means you're similar. We need to know which family is which. So these are called alkali metals. These are called alkaline earth metals. These are called the, oops, not aluminum group anymore. It's the boron group, sorry. Boron group, carbon group, boop. Nitrogen group, boy, this is hard. Oxygen group, yeah, the one that starts right there. Halogens, ooh, that's a different name, halogens, and noble gases. So just name the groups. Electron configurations are periodic. So remember how we talked about this is NS1, NS2, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Review. There was way too much writing for me to go this quickly. Families equals group, equal column, equals up, down. Periods are rows where the traits change but repeat. I forget, I think I forgot to say what those were. This, for example, would be period three. Whee! Period three is my awesome class. You're not in it, are you? And then, yes, you need to memorize the groupings. Periodic means repeating. Periodic means repeating. Periodic means repeating. Periodic means repeating. Just like the annoying song that says, I've got my mind set on you a thousand times. And that's it. Toodles.